What's up guys, your boy John here. I recently had to do a installation of an RGB control box for the Dualtron X2 after damaging my wire and shorting out the current RGB controller box that I had in the Dualtron X2. And one of the things that I had to do before I made the installation was to do some troubleshooting. And part of that troubleshooting involves seeing what was going on with the wire connections that I had. And here I'm just basically tapping the wires to see what's going on and why I'm not getting any connection or any rotation in my RGB light arrangement. And this wire that's on the front will RGB light, I damaged. And after I damaged it, I attempted to get me a three pin connector and reconnect that one. But in the process of doing so, I touched my hot wire and my ground wire and the signal wire for the RGB lights and I shorted out my RGB box. That's what I found out later. But this video, I'll be walking you through the process of how I did my troubleshooting to arrive at the fact that my RGB controller was damaged. In the first part of my troubleshooting, I just basically reconnected the damaged wire from the RGB front wheel and I tried to find which wire was connected to which because the problem I ran into once I tried to reconnect the wire that I damaged was that, the, it, that both sides had different color coatings. The side that came from the stem's battery had a different color coating than the side that went to the RGB lighting on the wheel. And so I, what I did is I played around with my connections until I saw which one would actually light up the lights, the RGB lights on the side panel and, you know, and on the column as well. You know, to get a general idea of whether or not I was connecting everything the right way. So after unsuccessfully uh, being able to get the lights to work, I realized I had to go inside of the deck to take a look at what was going on. Okay, I got everything open here. And as you can see from this image, this is the turn signal control panel. And it also controls the emergency blankers. And the other box over here is the RGB connect center or the connector box. And I noticed that one of the wires on the connector box was actually a little uh, frayed. It looks like it had been over, it looks like it had received a lot of extreme heat. So part of my process of elimination was to see if by disconnecting that particular connector, whether or not my lights would come on. I disconnected it and it did not come on as the video that I'm about to show displays. So I tested it after taking uh, that wire that looked like it was bad or loose and still I got no activity. And so I checked the terminal with my voltmeter to see whether or not there was any connectivity and there was indeed connectivity inside of the connector box, which lets me know that there is power coming to the connector box. While I was testing the leads on the inside of the connector box, I did notice, however, that I did get a situation where the light on the side panel, just one of the just one of the back lights in the rotation of RGB lights, it did come on and stay on, as you can see here. And 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 I had like just a small portion of all the lights that came on like there were one light on in the wheel motors and there were one light on both sides of the steering column. So I tried the remote to see if that would activate the RGB lights via the controller and possibly turn them on since I had them, since I had at least a, por a portion of the lights on uh, and I did not get any activity whatsoever and I also found that after I turned them off and turned them back on again they were not working at all. So I went back to the drawing board and began 
checking, checking the voltage or the DC voltage of each one of the leads. And, uh, and I consistently got 12 volts, you know, or close to it for every single connector that I was able to, um, to check, which kind of uh, let me know that power is getting to the, the connector box for the RGB. And I'm kind of getting the idea that it that is possibly the RGB controller that's on the inside of the stem. Okay, okay. So after all of my process of elimination work, uh, this is the conclusion that I came down to. Okay, we know that this is the RGB. This is the RGB controller that's in the stem up here. Those are the two RGB strips on this column. This is the wiring that leads down to the connector box under the deck right here. I tried the connection sockets in, a, in this box to see if they were getting an adequate 12 volts with my tester. And, and I came to and, and, and I found out that they were and I, I don't see anything out of place with the connection socket as it is displayed on the diagram. And still, whenever I try to select, turn them on, I still get the little sm slight blinking. So the conclusion of everything that I saw is that the problem is in the RGB lead controller, which is in the stem. So very carefully, I opened up the stem and I began to inspect all the wiring that I saw once I took the cap off the stem. And I noticed, you know, a few wires that were, were frayed. One wire was even partially shaved where it had uh, possibly been nicked by the screws that go down into the stem that hold the stem cap onto the top of the stem or the, the handlebar on the top of the stem. And, uh, and I just carefully looked at all the wiring and I made sure that I, I, I video recorded this so that I could see how all of those wirings connected in the event that I had to take something loose and, um, and put it back together again. And, um, and, and I also mentioned that, you know, the damage that I'd done to my RGB controller it was all my fault, but yet uh, USA Mini Motors, the guys there, or Mini Motors USA, whichever one it is, um, they were real good. I mean, I, I briefed them on everything that was going on, and they were there to assist me with feedback. And also, uh, they shipped me a controller box overnight, basically, and I got it real quick so that I could, uh, once I let them know that I thought that the issue was the, my controller box. And so I'm, here I'm just inspecting all the wires. I'm looking at what, you know, I'm looking at the challenge that's ahead of me with gently moving those wires out of that stem because they were packed in there pretty tight. And uh, there was not even room for me to stick my finger down in there at, at the moment that I took the, the handlebar off the stem. and. Um, and so what I did is I basically tried to locate or get a visual of the controller box, which was packed down under all of those wires. And one of the main things that I had to do was I had to loosen a, a, a grommet screw that holds the USB port on the Dualtron X2 so that I could push that port downward because that port was pushing those wires, packing those wires in there where you couldn't get your, get a finger down in there. And so once I, and once I did that and loosened it up, the wires, they came out more freely. And here you can see the beginnings of the, of me being able to see the controller box and the controller box was right here. So the exposed part of the RGB controller box that I can now see inside of the stem column um, it contained the connectors for the two RGB strips that were on the on the on the steering column post and so what I, I said I was going to do to just check to make sure that the new RGB controller would actually work those two lights was I unplugged those two lights from the old RGB controller that was still connected 
and then I plug the power source from the from from that old RGB controller to the power source of the new RGB controller and I also plugged in the two lights from the stem column into the new RGB controller as well to see if by turning on the power I would get a reaction from the new RGB controller that shows me that the problem was indeed my RGB controller which was down in the stem and I still hadn't taken the two connectors that control the rest of the RGB lights uh, a loose from the bottom of the old RGB controller because I was still you know treading very carefully so as not to damage any wires and I didn't know what was all under there and and I also uh, should mention that the RGB controller the old RGB controller that's still in there um, it had a sticky on it so that it stuck to the inside of the stem post and um, or the steering column and so I had to take my finger and stick it in there and separate it from the stem post so that it could move forward and pull and come out outward a little bit and one of the most challenging things about this job is that those wires are short so things were looking good after I connected the new box to only the front column RGB lights So guys, it was indeed the RGB controller that was out. So I have the new RGB controller here. And with only the power connected to the RGB controller. And the, and the two front columns lights plugged in. I am able to successfully get the lights to going with no problemo. Now, the next part of the equation is getting that box all the way out of there so that I can um, so that I can plug the the bottom half of the scooters RGB lighting to the bottom of this control box here. But part one successful. Now, getting all of that, getting that that controller out of there, getting that controller out of there. It is going to be a real challenge uh, as you can see the lights are working in the front with this part of the box so i'm going to un i'm going to unplug the box so that i don't damage anything while i'm trying to get this other half of the box out of here and it might be the case where i might just have to do a little snugging on the wires until um the connector releases the box and then i'll have to fish for the wires I'm not sure that's going to work but that's the tender part of doing this job without damaging wires and as you can see right here I have a wire that I have frayed in this process and while I'm at it let me see if let me see if this remote also works with this controller because that would be another thing that would be not cool yep it does no problem at all there either and let's put it on solid yeah so my remote works with it as well turn that off and I might add that this is the worst type of work that you should have to do on your scooter electrical work because all it takes is one boo-boo and things go things go afoul real fast when it comes to dealing with these wiring and then you, and then your eyes are not always on everything that's why i'm trying to video what's going on here so i can see what mistakes i could have possibly made once i get this baby put back together so now i'm just going to disconnect all the wiring from the new rgb box and prepare to get the get the old RGB box completely out so that I can get it put in there and get those wires connected from the bottom part of the RGB box and we'll be back in business. Okay, after after wrestling with that the new controller all day long RGB controller that is, I finally uh 
I finally managed to do a one finger hookup down on the back of the controller where I was running short of wires and I uh, got it in there and everything uh, but the only thing that I'm seeing that uh, looks like maybe not connected correctly is my front wheel so my lights are now on uh, got them turned off via my light because I got to reconnect that wire down there to make sure it's right but uh power them on and we are back in business as you can see and the only one that's not working is my front the one that I did my wiring on so I gotta go back and inspect my wiring looks like the uh, it's like the back one is on here too so and those on that side are on and of course the stem was on as well so now I'm just cleaning up my work and uh, going in and clamping down some of the wires, getting them, getting them out of the way of the screws. And I got one wire that I'm about to I'm about to disconnect and put a little solder and uh, on right here. And once I get that done, I'll close her back up and we'll be back in business after I get that front light. And it might the RGB might be out on that front light, so I don't know. I'll see. But thumbs up. Got the old RGB controller out. The new one in. It took took me all day to get it done. Cause I was trying to you know, I did my best to uh not disconnect any of my wires while I did it so that uh I wouldn't have to go through the headache of trying to put them back on again. So that's that.